and welcome to Murder Dictionary Podcast. My name is Brianna and over there is Kelly. Hey. Before we get started, we just wanted to remind you once again to check out our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We've got memes and announcements about episodes and all sorts of information about the show and serial killers and all sorts of true crime goodness. If you haven't already, we would appreciate if you would rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. We like to shout out the five-star reviews on the program, so at the end of the show, you can check it out, and we will say thank you if you left a review. We have a few new supporters on Patreon this week, wow. as well as another batch of Patreon rewards that went out last week in the mail. So, our new supporters for Patreon this week are Angela, Billy, Crystal, and Jasmine. But <laughs> Billy not Billy Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> The Billy Crystal. He's oh, really man. into us. <laughs> Angela, Billy, Crystal. Jasmine. Jasmine. Yeah. Aww. So thank you so much, you guys. We really appreciate that. And we did miss last week because we were sick. Yeah. And pretty Sorry. much dying. Mm -hmm. And that sounds super white girl dramatic, but very true. <laughs> The, on our deathbed. <laughs> the emergency room I went to had a metal detector out front. <laughs> <laughs> Real classy joint. I got waved down. The so, first one or the second one? First one. Okay, I was going to say, because I think the second one you went to was nicer. It was urgent care. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. Oaks, it's good. <laughs> So, yeah, we were in some real classy places mm -hmm. getting looked at by some real asshole individuals. Got my weed in. They oh, good. He didn't even take it out of my bag. So That's awesome. I just forgot I had it. Did there. you hide your gun in your weed? Or <laughs> in my <that's> snatch. He <laughs> didn't want there. So we apologize for missing last week, but we're going to try and fit in a couple extra bonus episodes. I have one that I'm working on that we'll actually put uh, out on the regular platforms like iTunes and Stitcher and all that, plus an extra bonus episode for Patreon. So we're going to work on those. We know we missed last week, but we're going to try and make it up to you, I promise, and we'll make it up to you double if you're on Patreon. Yes. Cool? Cool. Also, I don't know if anyone's checked it out yet, but we do have t-shirts available on Threadless. What? <laughs> <laughs> Did you already forget that? <laughs> Um. Yeah, I told you last time we you recorded. You did. I was <laughs> testing you. We Hashtag have... weed. <laughs> Hashtag it's a fucking rough week, man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I remember because I set up the page, but I can understand not oh, remembering. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. <laughs> because you did all the hard work no, and all the. <laughs> I think that if someone told me that last week, I still wouldn't, I wouldn't remember. <laughs> like, it's only because I? I went through the motions, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is a blur. <laughs> Pretty Only much everything people told me is no longer in my brain. Oh, okay. NyQuil ate it. <laughs> mm. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, we're on Threadless. So it's threadless.com slash murder dictionary. And that link, uh, along with all the other links for our social media and Patreon, is going to be in the description and show notes. Cool? Cool. We try and put all that info in there so you always have it in the show notes. With that is going to be some timestamps for any times in the story where it gets particularly violent, gruesome, etc., and you may want to skip it. So in case you want to do that, we will put time timestamps in there for <laughs> it's you. Timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> also, timestamps for every time I fuck up a word, <laughs> just so you can like do a bingo game out of it or something. Timestamps for when my balls go on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> So no, nah, everybody wants to see that. We don't need timestamps for that. <laughs> okay, okay. That's the highlight of the show. That's going to be in the highlight reel, like a football game. <laughs> you know how people wear like masks to go to sleep at night? Yeah. You're going to do that with your balls? <laughs> yeah. Sounds really relaxing. <laughs> Soft. <laughs> Creamy. <laughs> Super comforting. The last thing that's going to be in the description and show notes are links to any resources for domestic violence or child protective services, suicide hotlines, anti-bullying services, anything like that. So we will always have those in the show notes as well, just to make it easier for anyone that needs those resources. And I think we are ready to do some some sister sister time. <laughs> some scissor scissor sisters. Scissor sisters, yeah. one of my favorite bands. Woo! 
So we've got another sister story, mm-hmm. Sisters Part 2. This is about the Mulhall sisters. The Lynn- Mulhall. Mulhall. Okay, so everything in this story like is- Like Mulholland, but just lazily halfway through. Mulhall. Yeah, kind of. It's like, uh, since they're Irish, everything sounds kind of crazy in this story. Oh, awesome. Like super angry and drunk? Yeah. No, actually, that's exactly what the story should be Because I feel called. like the whole language sounds really aggressive and it is. a little bit belligerent. Yeah. There's this tone to it. Which sounds like I'm saying that not as a compliment, but I mean it in a really positive yeah, way. I'm like, it. I love it so much. It's just, you know. <laughs> Thank you for talking fun. Like when it's, uh, you know, like the fall and it's what, yes. like whatever the hot chick's name is, you know, mm-hmm. um, Scully or whatever. Uh, when she's talking, it's fine. But when these people are talking yeah. and I hear them in my head, it's just. Super fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an amusement park for your brain. Exactly. But in the fall, they talk really slow. Everything's slow and very reserved mm-hmm. and whatever. It's different than what I would normally think. Yeah, you know? maybe it seems like a higher class where this is just... <laughs> it's just our people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the good old working class. So let me tell you a little bit about the Mulhall family. Yeah. <clears throat> so Lynn and Charlotte had their parents, John and Kathleen Mulhall. And they were married in the early 1970s. It's a great time for marriage. Key yeah. parties, <laughs> swinging. <laughs> I don't know how they did it in Ireland, but I'm imagining since they were super drunk. Because I guess in the 80s, I'm not making that up, but like in the 80s, there was a lot of crack. I mean, crack everywhere, but a lot of crack and booze in Ireland. I that I really didn't know. I feel dumb. I feel like I should know everything about crack, and I don't know that. <laughs> and there's a lot of murders in Ireland, too, which mm-hmm. is crazy. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. the. I had no idea. So. I knew about the murders, not about the crack. Oh, crack I'm disappointed in myself. It's my favorite things. <laughs> okay, so basically, Kathleen's surname before she was married was Ward, and she grew up as a member of a settled traveler family at Macroom Road, Kulak. Ooh, travelers. Yeah, so I didn't know what a traveler was, and I guess they're called paveys or tinkers, pike, pikeys, gypsies, mm-hmm. but they're just like an ethnic group who like have a set of traditions in Ireland, and I had no idea about that. So They're kind of around... Everywhere. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> but I feel like it's kind of, I don't know, they they experience some discrimination Yeah. As, as a class of people. Yeah. That's very common. And so a lot of those names that are used are kind of used against them, you know, and Oops. there's a lot of places. No, 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 it's fine. Oh. They, a lot of times it seems, keep either to themselves mm-hmm. in their own communities of yeah. just like all gypsy community or, you know, because people won't hire them, they don't tell potential employers or whatever yeah, that, that they belong hidden. to this group, you know? They were, that's a, funny that you said that because because I didn't know uh, that they do live on the outside of town. They have their own little mm-hmm. like, uh, but you were saying that people. It's almost like a compound. Exactly. Like, yeah. And they have like kind of not their own like rules, but not, not exactly, but they all like live together. Kind of like how the Amish and stuff. Exactly. Do, right? It's one of those kind of things like the LDS or the Amish or. Yeah. It's very similar where it's this whole community that's created separate from society. I saw that they were saying that dumping was like a sanitary dumping or something was like a problem of why the people on, cause they live on the outskirts mm-hmm. usually like in the boonies. So they don't have like proper disposal places or whatnot. Something about, yeah. Just, that's why they get hated on a lot, I guess, supposedly, is because they Interesting. go. But they do have their own electricity power. And it says sanitary dumping, but, like, trash and everything like that. I don't know if they're just a big problem, but. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. Didn't make it sound so nice. I've always Shh. wanted to learn more about that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we should it's just, fascinating. I really think I should look more into it. Maybe we could even do that for a letter and, yeah. like, look into these traveler murders or something. There's got to be some. We should go. <laughs> yes, and we should join. join. Yeah. <laughs> One We're question. in a cult, you guys. <laughs> can we can we podcast from here? Or? Right? Yeah. Is it chill if I set up these mics? <laughs> you don't allow maybe mics? record you while you're not paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think of travelers. I think of Brad Pitt and Snatch because he was supposed oh. to be a traveler. That's the first thing I think of. That's... Is like kind of this slightly different language, even mm-hmm. or dialect or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Brad Pitt. <laughs> mm. Okay, so. She was basically, uh, she lived as a traveler and then she settled to an accommodation in Kulak and she was uh, like brought up in a caravan in a place called Finless. Very common for travelers. No, they all have that's caravans. Mine, but I just think of a uh, Oregon Trail. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just so weird to me. Okay. So basically other members of Kathleen's immediate family lived in halting sites. 
What's um, that? So a halting site. So it's basically for, um, it's a site for the nomadic travelers, for the Oh, so it's like a very specific kind of campground almost yeah, to set the, up your caravans. On the outside of, yeah, for caravans and for like um, housing all the type of people like that. So. Interesting. Okay. When she got married, when Kathleen got married to Taliban John Mulhall, she turned her back on this traveler family and she kind of just gave everything up, disowned her family and came you know, to Dublin to, to start a new life with her new husband. So that's interesting. It really does remind me of like, like LDS or some more other community like that. Like if yeah. you choose to marry outside or do certain things that are against whatever their kind of community rules or cultural standards are, then you're pretty much ousted. Yeah. Which yeah. is shitty. Cause what if you just want to change a pace or just, you don't like right? the people you grew up with. They're like, they're, they're yeah. a bunch of dicks. I don't, and from what I understand, travelers aren't even a religion. Like, I feel like that's a religious thing yeah. to just oust people for no reason. Like, oh, you like this other dude? Fuck you. You it's don't like, want maybe the wives? dick's better. Yeah. Maybe travelers have small dicks. Maybe I'm you want to see saying. the ocean. Maybe <laughs> right? I don't fucking want to be in Ireland. Maybe I... At a halting site all yeah, the time. Exactly. Need some variety. Maybe you I just see the world. A massage parlor. Something. A fucking... I Vietnamese need a G-spot spot. Spot. massage. Yeah, a G-spot. <laughs> <laughs> or a pea spot, whatever. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> the Mohals raised a family of three boys and three girls in Kilcare Gardens, a working class area in Tallaght. I'm sorry if I'm saying all this wrong because it's Irish. It's I. It's Tala is spelled with a G H T, by the way. So hmm. Tala. Tala or something? No, it's Tala. <laughs> and Tala. Uh, so this is in South... Oh, I, I, yeah, I can picture it. Tala. Yeah. Tala. Tala. Yeah, we don't know how to pronounce things. No. That's not what people are listening for. They no. know we don't know words, okay, cool. right? You yeah. guys know that? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, Tala is in South Dublin. Uh, John Mohall was a hardworking glazier, which is like, you know, he does deal with glass and mm -hmm. all that stuff. That's fascinating. Yeah. I, I love watching people blow glass. Because it's really hot, right? It's like, yeah. You know, yeah I and they're just like molding it like clay. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Until it drops and then. And then, yeah, it's yeah. heartbreaking. And yeah. then they just cry over it mm -hmm. like little bitches. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing with, I was going to say weed. It all comes back to weed. <laughs> but uh, John Mohall was basically the breadwinner of the household. He was the mm -hmm. only one kind of bringing in income. And they had they had a pretty big family, so he did kind of, you know, take care of them. The relationship between John and Kathleen was pretty much tumultuous and mm. violent. I thought you were going to say they were, like, super happy. Yeah. Always romance. Nothing but flowers and birds chirping. Maybe good makeup sex? <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as I can assume. But... They were both uh, they were both known like substance abusers mm. and alcoholics. And I guess, like I was saying before, it was a really big trend for um, they kind of lived in like a, the area of Dublin that was kind of like not lower class, but just impoverished, you know, mm -hmm. similar to like Section 8 type stuff. I'm okay. sure. So I guess for this area in the 80s and 90s, it was really impoverished and just really like booze filled, drug filled. Mm. And that's how people kind of, you know, dealt with their issues. Hmm. Nothing like today. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like the neighborhood we're currently in right now oh while God, recording it's this. so fucking bad. Uh, did you see the crack car when you walked in? No, but I got, oh, the lady who was trying to <laughs> talk to us on her way in was quite interesting. She looked like somebody's grandma. However, she was like, hello, girls. <laughs> Like, you were fine until you opened your mouth. That's creepy. Yeah, that's not your voice. Have a good night, girls. <laughs> <laughs> what? She looks like a little fucking grandma. She's, she's somebody's abuelita. Yeah. And she's just standing out there in the corner <laughs> she, greeting all the girls. Creepy. And yeah. she obviously didn't come into the building. I thought she wanted to come into the building. Yeah, I thought that's, that's why I closed the door behind us. <laughs> <laughs> I like pushed it open and you slammed just it shut. It. Yeah, yeah, because she's not coming in here and stealing our microphones. Yeah, no, <laughs> word up, dude. Never trust an old lady. <laughs> I know they can get away with anything. Seriously. First ones to rob you. Oh yeah, when you and I are old, it's gonna be on. We're gonna do Big all lots, the all day. drugs, yeah. steal all the stuff from the Dollar Tree, because that's a whole lot of money, Kelly. <laughs> just Twenty cans of soup <laughs> <laughs> rolling out on our cart. <laughs> You're gonna be on the rascal, and I'll just give you a lap dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, five feet past that lady is a crack car that's half the whole right side is like the the wheels gone, the the paneling on the door is gone, and people just rotate throughout that car. 
and just sit in it and smoke some crack. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So very similar to the neighborhood that the Mohals were in. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So John, uh, John and Kathleen were violent, and they subjected their children to abuse throughout their lifetime. Mm-hmm. And this cycle of violence affected at least half of the Mohal children because three out of six of them had pretty severe criminal records. So half of them got out. And, and the other three died. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to be too much, but it's just like you know it affected all of them. Yeah, like, it did. But the ones that you know, but maybe... the other three, I know. Um, I know a couple of them educated themselves. I think one got their masters and stuff. Sometimes, which... yeah, I think it does kind of go to either extreme. Like, yeah, you know, I, I like how that you become a cop or a lawyer or yeah. like a doctor or something where it, it requires that you're extremely dedicated and vigilant and hyper successful. Exactly. That's but that's funny that that's what our level of success is. If you got like a masters or you had any type of job. You're successful. It's not right. that you're, you're not fucked up from your parents beating you because you're a lawyer. You're like you're right. a doctor. You and then you go home and you know hire dominatrix yourself. and get yes. wasted and yep. yeah, yeah, try and cope with it. But at least you're a doctor. <laughs> so let's talk about the fifty percent that didn't make it. Yeah, that's um, why we're here today. <laughs> so one quote said the family was poisoned by drugs, drink, and violence. <laughs> I'm into all of these things. <laughs> <laughs> this family completely partied together, and the parents set no real bi- like boundaries. Basically, this really sounds like your family. I know. <laughs> Holy shit! And there's like, dude, how many of, of your brothers have, are in jail right now? <laughs> two of them. Three of the boys at least have like good records. I, you know, that's solid <laughs> four out of eight, man. <laughs> So it was like, I just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, this is Kelly's family. Yeah, this is my parents in Ireland. Kathleen was very close with her daughters, Charlotte and Linda. And the, this, the girls kind of seemed to follow her in life, you know, just after her um, with the drinking and the substance abuse. Mm. That's pretty good. You know, your parents definitely set good examples. and uh, Right? <laughs> Uh, like mother, like daughter. Yeah, no, that's exactly. And you'll see how that kind of plays out, which is really, mm. really sad. And I think that's a really hard line to walk, you know, like yeah. friend and parent. But yeah, I think there is kind of once substance abuse is in play, the parent wants to be the cool parent. Yeah. And then it just crosses the line where it's just like, yeah, your kid is still a kid. Like you have to be the one telling them not to be yeah. stepping over the boundaries. You your, know? your daughter can't be holding your hair in the toilet. Right. Right? Like, it's the other <laughs> way around. So Charlotte and Linda, the first one, Linda, Linda began drinking alcohol and doing heroin at a super young age, like in her teens. Me too, bro. Yeah, she basically <laughs> used drugs at like every corner to deal with life's obstacles, mm. just get her through stuff. She dropped out of school pretty early, was unemployed. Mm. Fucking having a good time, man. Just right? having, being fun. Just partying. Yeah. I mean, what? who has time for school when you're sleeping all the time? Right? <laughs> yeah, I used to nod off in class all the time. <laughs> at least you fucking made it to class. Jesus Christ. I really, truly can't believe I graduated on like, like three days before graduation ceremony. I fucking went to my counselor's office and they told me I was going to not graduate unless I got my um, Down teachers. Down on your knees. <laughs> <laughs> bow, <chicka> bow, bow. <laughs> so, yeah, so they told me I had missed too many classes, basically. Yep. It was just for attendance. I could keep my grades up even though I was nodding off in class. Wow. But I, I just had missed so much. And so they're like, you have to take this paper to your teachers and have them sign this which is not a good thing to give to any teenager <laughs> and also not a good thing to give a fucking 17-year-old junkie. <laughs> so my fucking high ass goes to the bathroom, I does a little it. cocaine, <laughs> <laughs> and signs those fucking papers. <laughs> so I guess technically, like, I had the grades to graduate, but not the attendance, but yeah. I, I shouldn't have graduated, but I forged that shit. That's the principal's fucking fault for not knowing his staff signatures or even checking. Right. Unless you were just really good at it. I'm, yeah, I mean, I had never seen their signatures. I was just making it up. <laughs> really? I was like, you just got all your papers. And I was from super class. wasted. Like, <laughs> I had cocaine and heroin in my system, and I'm a teenager in a bathroom signing my fucking teacher's signature. Uh, True story. Yeah, my <laughs> hero. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. At least you made it. You made it out. Yeah, but I relate to these ladies. Yeah. Of drugs. Man. I only just have one point over them because I didn't murder anyone because I'm assuming these sisters murdered someone. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you you 
assume right. <laughs> I don't know if they were as high as you were trying to do signatures, but I can do a but lot. You'll see. I can do a lot when I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see that they can too, actually. Yay! <laughs> overachievers. Yeah. Linda was 30 years old at the time of the killing and was a mother to four children. <gasps> Uh, not that it's a huge deal, but I want an article like to make a point that she was had four children before the age of twenty five with mm. her first boyfriend. Uh, things didn't really work out for her. That's and her first hard, boyfriend. yeah. And although Linda had not really been shown like a good standard of what parenting should be, which I mean, who can? What, there's no set standard, I guess. But she was known as like a dedicated mother, and she loved her children a lot and mm. would do anything for them. And although she didn't really repeat the cycle of bad parenting, she did subject her children to deal with the consequences of like her relationships yeah. and how she handles things in life. Yeah, your parent, your kids see everything. You know what I mean? Like even if you're the best mother in so many other ways, if they see how you treat yourself, yeah, the kind of trouble that you get in, the kind of relationships you get in, that carries on. It doesn't matter if you treat them right; they're well fed and taken care of, and yeah. all these other things. They still see that. My brothers treat my stepmom exactly, or their girlfriends exactly the way they treat my stepmom, yep. which is not that good. It's but. a cycle. It just repeats itself because of what they saw. <clears throat> After the deterioration of her previous relationship with her baby's daddy, mm -hmm. um, she began dating a man named Wayne Kinsella. And I think this guy's a fucking piece of shit, and I have to just explain him a little bit. <laughs> Even though he's not, like, super pertinent to the story, he's just an asshole. <laughs> so he was uh, always, like, an extremely violent person, even during his childhood. His sister stated that he used to beat members of his own family, <gasps> including his parents. That's and he, terrifying. <laughs> he's one of those terrifying kids, like yes. a horror movie. Like, like, wake up and they're standing over your bed and just staring Dude, at you. if my kid hits me once, I'm kicking it off a bridge. <laughs> you heard it here first. I'm the fucked. weird thing is that, like, <laughs> even babies are, like, mildly violent. They just yeah, grab at your hair. Your hair. They're bald spots. Yes. Oh, my head. No. Ugh. <laughs> it's always going to be that way. Oh. But some kids are just, like, terrifying. Yeah. Um, Something about that. When you're a kid, it's like, if you're an adult and you're creepy, it's just, I don't know. It's not as scary. You yeah, know what I mean? Kids are supposed to be innocent and not know, like, how to creep people. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. yeah no, children beating. He subjected Linda and her four children to regular beatings. Mm. And in one instance, he hit the children with an electrical flex. Oh. Eventually, the, the abuse was investigated and Linda finally reported it. Thank goodness. Oh, good. And the children were taking, taken away from her and into the care of social services, uh, while Wayne Kinsella served a six-year prison sentence for his cruelty to the children. Good. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Just a little bit more about him, because this is just... I just want to show you what kind of dude she brought into the household, mm. and this is, like, her... This is her type, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, and you she's know like, I mean? oh, but I'm a good parent. Exactly. However, I'm going to subject my kids to the beatings from another person. Exactly. And let them know by the fact that I'm in a relationship with this person... That's okay. That that behavior is all right. Yeah, it's... Fucking That's crazy. fucking terrible. So after this, in 1996, Kinsella received an eight-year prison sentence for the murder of a retired auctioneer, mm. Thomas Foreman. Was uh, the auctioneer just like yelling too much? He was at his wife's grave <gasps> in the cemetery. So, oh my god, I'm a dick. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, he might have been yelling. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not He's wrong. trying to give her one last like auction <laughs> or something. Come here at five. Are you coming back at five minutes before four? For the three and two. I'll go fuck myself. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, fucking. Who does that? He yeah. murdered an auctioneer at his wife's gravesite. Oh my god! At what? the Glass Nevin Cemetery in Dublin. That's hmm. fucking nuts. On September twenty third, nineteen ninety five. Was there any grudge between them or? No idea. But Okay. Uh, he, Sorry. I'm just like no. totally fascinated by this. Like it's, you just swooped up on someone in a cemetery. I think he's just violent and he's crazy. And, like uh, someone looked at him wrong and he, they died. He only got eight years. I just am realizing Shut only up. eight years. Yeah. He received an eight year prison sentence. I hate that. What the oh, fuck? Oh, that breaks my heart. And then in 2012, he was jailed for life, which is weird that he was even out. Oh, mm -hmm. no, 95 to 2012. That's eight years to get out and mm -hmm. commit another fucking crime. Uh, he was jailed for life for being found guilty of the murder of Adil Asali, hmm. who basically was stabbed to death in the in a field. And Wayne, for this, we know a little bit more. Wayne thought that he 
that Mr. Asahi had been uh, involved in the killing of his younger brother, oh. Lee Kinsella, who was shot dead in Finglas in May of 2006. So it was kind of more of like a revenge killing. Mm-hmm. Wayne's sister Donna said that Mr. Asahi had nothing to do with Lee's death. Mm-hmm. And Wayne oh. um, Kinsella's nephew ended up getting jailed for 15 years for helping him kill <gasps> Asahi, which is like all these lives are ruined because this guy's a piece of shit. Right. He's really awful. Just let his anger get the best of him. So with this, uh, and him being taken away and all this stuff happening, it sent Linda down like a further black hole of substance abuse. Like her mm. children being away, so you have more. And for what you did, you know, yeah, she just basically got on heroin and booze and started partying really hard. Oh no! I, again, we were saying like she probably was just accustomed to it, right? Yeah. And then accustomed to dealing with that problem with alcohol and mm-hmm. heroin. So it's a numbing. It's a coping mechanism. Yeah. And. uh it's, I just think it's kind of crazy because in the same way that it's just this big cycle, but in the same way that she put her children around like an extremely dangerous person and subjected them to that, uh, her mother kind of did the same to her. Mm. So previous to this or prior to this, uh, she only had a larceny conviction on her record from 1993 and never really was a violent offender. So she was a pretty good lady. I mean, besides substance abuse and alcohol. like You mean alcoholism. she was never caught? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> actually. Who am I to fucking say? <laughs> So I don't have a record. (laughs) That's true. But and the people with the record sometimes aren't that fucking bad. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like uh, it really is about being caught most of the time. Uh, How clever are you? Right. So her sister, Charlotte Mohall, was the younger one and she was 21 when the murder occurred. And like her sister and mom, she was pretty much high as fuck all the time. Mm. Like Just they were really into getting fucked up. She often moved between the family home and other places in Dublin. She had a longer criminal record than her sister, but only included like minor convictions, such as criminal damage, which I think I had to look all these. <laughs> it's basically where you destroy property belonging to someone or whatever, or just being reckless with your property with intent to destroy it. So like I could like, I'm just assuming that I could just grab something of yours and then Maybe I was going to fuck it up and break it, but I didn't, but I can still get charged. That's, <laughs> that's how the law read to me. So. And a, a It's bunch, about intentions. Yeah, it is about intent. And a, a bunch of other like public order offenses, which included like, you know, maybe being intoxicated. These are public order offenses because I had mm. to look them up. Being intoxicated in a public space, committing disorderly conduct in a pu- public space, threatening, abusing or insulting someone in a public space or failure to comply with a cop, which is called the Garda, Gardai, Gardi, Gard, Gardi. It's G, no, because it's spelled Garda and Gardi. Okay. Gardai. It's spelled <laughs> like that. Again, I'm going to pronounce everything wrong in this. I also don't have an accent. So when I'm trying to recreate what someone else is saying in an accent, yes. it's just, what do America, how do Americans say it? Really awful. Cops. We always sound bad at <laughs> <than> everything. <Pigs. laughs> and we're in the worst part of America for sounding good, you know? Valley girls. <laughs> like, yeah, smart. we sound terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I can just feel the nasally. <laughs> <laughs> so Charlotte was also involved in prostitution, and she was pretty well known around the town. She actually got into prostitution because of her mother, Kathleen. Charlotte never worked a day in her life. But a hand job is still a job, right, Brianna? Mm-hmm. Blow job's still a job, motherfucker. I know. I like how they seriously. I like how they try to say that. Like she never worked a day in her life after saying that she is, prostitute. No, if you talk to a sex worker, <laughs> that is you've never worked a day in your life. <laughs> exactly. God damn it! You don't know what I've had to deal like, with. Like, do you do anal for an hour? Right. What? <laughs> like you and tr- pretend to like it. <laughs> exactly. All you have to do is smile and hand someone a latte. You piece of shit. <laughs> do you call? I your- <laughs> work for my fucking money. <laughs> work. <laughs> you call your boss, daddy. Like, <laughs> come on. Uh, do you have to wipe your face on fucking frequent breaks all the time? Yeah. yeah. If you don't have to shower after every part of your job, <laughs> then you don't have a job. <laughs> I've showered twice and it's not even noon. <laughs> but she would hook. This is almost like a dream life. I'm really jealous. She would hook, make money, and bounce to go get trash somewhere else. So yeah. either they would switch it up. Either she would go hook and be in a different town, make money and come back home and spend the money at home and stuff like that. Or she would just, you know, party at home and then go out. Just either way, she would come back, hook, go to different places, live that boss life. She was a traveling hooker. She was. Yeah. I'm really, 
I'm really jealous. Every time I hear that Jane's traveling and going to Hook, I'm like, ooh, I'm so jealous. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to San Francisco and make money yeah. for anal. Yes. <laughs> like a little bit of anal. Just like, like not that much, but like enough to go to San Francisco for. <laughs> <laughs> But that does sound like the life. You're just fucking and, you know. Getting fucked up with your mom and your sister all the time? <laughs> what the fuck? That sounds great. Dream come true. So What's your five-year plan? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to travel and hook and drink. and Sleep, fuck, yeah. eat. Repeat. <laughs> <laughs> so the guard eye, or they're called the guards. It's just the, the pigs. You know what I mean? The cops. No, it's the, it's the, <laughs> the police cheese. force. Yeah. Of uh, the Republic of Ireland. They commented that the girl's upbringing was troubled and tough. Again, all these like little, just know if the cops say you're like, right. these are they people. They know you well enough to know your whole family, basically. And they see crimes every fucking day. If your shit is troubled and tough, you are a standard that, I mean, mm. I don't want to achieve. But <laughs> the household began to deteriorate around 2002 when Kathleen met a new man, Uh-oh. which seemed kind of to divide the household. Like some of the kids were cool with it. Some of them weren't. The man was a Kenyan immigrant named Farah Swale Noor. Mm-hmm. And, That's uh, a cool last name. Yeah, super. I, I like it. I like Farah the Swale. Farah Noor. Yeah. Wow. Pretty good. Kathy Mohal decided it was a really good idea to move Farah into the family home while her husband, John, was still living there. Ooh. Pretty fucked up. So. Damn. Yeah. It's pretty shady. So. That's. Wow, shady lady. I mean, the balls, though. Yeah. I, I'm i saying that in admiration, the not ke- judgment. The Kegel <laughs> strength it took to do that. Let's stop saying the balls. The Kegels it took. Chrome-plated ovaries, man. <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of caused stress, and uh, eventually John and some of the children moved out with him. John rented different places throughout Dublin, but returned to his home when Kathleen and Nora decided to move to Cork mm-hmm. uh, together. They got like a flat and stuff together and moved in. And now the family could kind of go back to the way it was. And then it stayed that way forever, right? Yes. The end. Also to add, Ireland's pretty fucked up. I guess it's worse to be, it's more of a bigger problem. This is kind of something that he dealt with too, that uh, the community knew that his wife left him for an immigrant, (gasps) which is kind of fucked up. Oh, jeez. Uh, no. It's, what the fuck? Yeah, and he's like the hardworking, like, you know, type whatever the fuck where he's like, you An know. upstanding citizen. Yeah, so he's, I don't know. And but this guy's. just racist as shit. Yeah, exactly. I don't wait to go. Oh, my God. It's kind of just like America. I mean, yeah, everywhere is racist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just fucking, ugh. So. It's humanity. <laughs> so, although Noor is the victim, he was a habitually violent individual with oh, no God. respect for women. And it makes it really hard for me to not fucking, like, I don't want to say, you know, be really, like, you kind of got what you deserve, but we'll see. He but um similar to, like, the Brescia Meadows thing, exactly. where it's like you can't expect someone to take abuse for so long exactly. and not snap on you in or you some just, way or another. Like, you shouldn't have been violating someone in the first place. You can't have shitty actions and not expect shitty consequences, Right. right? That's not victim blaming, is it? (laughs) Is it? Fuck. We'll see. So, uh, Noor paid human traffickers to smuggle him into Ireland in December of 1996. He then claimed to be a Somalian whose family was killed back in Mogadishu, even stating that he had seen his own family murdered in front of him. Later investigations revealed that he was from Kenya and his family was still alive. He just (gasps) just deserted them. Damn. (laughs) yeah, they're... he's like deuces, y'all dead to me. <laughs> exactly. I said they were dead, but I meant dead to me. <laughs> like I, th- I think I saw them. Uh, like there was like, like a lion. In and my a baby. heart, they were killed in front of me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Damn. Fair heard that Ireland was a fantastic place that gives you money for doing nothing, and he thought this was his ticket to happiness. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, this led to a. Con- I would never go somewhere like that. I'd be so bored. <laughs> yeah. You mean well, there's nothing? You're not an alcoholic. <laughs> what the fuck? That's true. Uh, Those days so, are behind me. You, you mean I can get drunk all day and get paid to do nothing but get drunk? <laughs> fuck I yeah. I guess at this point in my life, I'd be like, okay, cool. I can research and write all the time. Yeah. Things change. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> uh, 
This led to a constant struggle for citizenship for him. Farinor was led into Ireland without a passport, claiming he had to flee Somalia and couldn't get his passport. Mm. Ireland seemed kind of lenient about letting people into their country at this yeah. moment and could have been stopped. Right. You know? Also, I thought it should be noticed that I'm so glad we have Facebook because if my fucking husband left me, I'd be searching. I would find him online. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm stalking the shit out of them. So I'm going to stalk you. So find where you are. Future husband, don't ever leave me. <laughs> <laughs> So the Department of Justice, Equality, and Law Reform ordered that he be deported, but he appealed and was granted citizenship in March of 1999 on grounds that as long as he fathered an Irish-born child, he would be good. What? How is that a thing? Just knock up a girl. Yeah. You know what, dude? You can stay here. Just knock up one of our chicks. Just put your cum all up in a bunch of ladies yeah. and see what happens, and then you can stay. <laughs> Like, what is that? And he did what it. What kind of rule is that? It's a fucked up one. Oh, like we're breeding animals or something. Can we peg a dude to stay in a country? Right? <laughs> What's ass babies? If I make you have like a pee spot orgasm, <laughs> then you get to stay. That is way harder than knocking someone up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's way more rewarding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you want a fucking fantastic prostate come or yeah. you want a baby a prost- baby you have to like take care of for yeah. a long time you just get to nut and bolt you know like- <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do <laughs> <laughs> nut and bolt <laughs> so Nawar either either he wanted to be a citizen really badly or just liked being a really fucked up person mm. maybe it was a little bit a little of both bit of- <laughs> both things but- sound great <laughs> in 1997 he raped uh, a mentally disabled girl <gasps> Um, and she would la- later give birth to his son. No, no, mm-hmm. no, no. So it is believed uh, be- it is believed that Noor had two other children by two different women, both claiming that he raped them. Oh my god! Claims also stated that he took pornographic pictures of his partner and even burned his son with a cigarette. Oh, he's a great guy. <laughs> oh my god! He had four previous convictions for offenses, including intoxication, threatening, and abusive behavior, and assault. Noor had faced. Eight charges of disorder and assault, one involving a sexual assault in which a knife was found at the scene by Gardai. Gardi, that word. Uh, the caps. Although he was convicted on three occasions, he never served time in jail. Shut up. Swear to God. <laughs> See, this is the part where I never say that murder is justifiable, but I can understand why someone would think that there's only one option. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. If you know that the person has never been held accountable and you don't see any hope of that getting better, this starts to, it's like depression where it feels like it's always been this way. It's Mm -hmm. always going to be that way. It's like the characteristic of depression. So when you feel like he's always going to be abusive and he's always going to continue this forever, like there's no stopping it. Any intervention by law enforcement has not worked up until this point. He's never been held accountable. Yeah. So, like, you're never going to be free from it unless you completely take his life. Yep. I, and it's the only way it's to be free. totally offered, awful. There's, like, nothing that's okay about murdering someone, but I can understand that thought process of someone being, like, I'm trapped unless I take their life. Exactly. I will never be free from this, you know? Exactly. Fuck. So this is just what kind of just, he's a real piece of work, but Kathleen Mulhall thought he was pretty cool. So mm. let's see. Um, he lived in an bunch of different areas in Dublin and like the inner city uh but just jumped around place to place throughout Dublin before he Probably moved in keep a place very long of course like, that's kind of the lifestyle of an alcoholic mm-hmm. uh but Kathleen liked him and Gardax described him as being particularly violent towards women oh you uh, think yeah <laughs> I mean, very observant again I like their quotes because it's just like uh, again they see crimes all the time so mm. Specifically towards women, he was he was a real dick. But um, he was also the suspect for a murder occurring in 1999, but was later ruled out, surprisingly. I wonder if that case was ever solved or if it's still open. No, it's, it's a closed. possibility. It's okay. closed. Yeah, they got That's someone. interesting. Yeah, someone... Uh, I mean, it's bad enough if you were a suspect. Like, obviously, <sighs> there's something wrong. It's like, but... let me see the evidence that he didn't do it. Right? <laughs> I'm pretty... Just, he did it. Let's just... <laughs> Although... He clearly has like a history of violence. His reputation was one of duality. He he was really nice and respectful while sober, like most people, right. and a violent aggressor while he was drunk. 
I'm guessing he's just drunk all the time, honestly, because it's gotta be it. People described him as a really good person and he had friends. It wasn't like he was alone and by himself. I was like a lot of alcoholics get, you know, mm-hmm. ostracized by a lot of things. So Fair and Kathleen met at a nightclub in Tallet. The relationship was tumultuous and filled with booze filled nights. Yep. He subjected Kathleen to regular beatings and mm. is accused of raping her as well. Uh, when being interviewed at one point, she stated Nora had broken her ribs, fingers, and wrists and had been to the hospital on different occasions. Oh, my God. While they lived in court together, Nora struggled to find a stable job. So they returned uh, to Dublin, hopping from hostel to hostel. Although Linda, uh, the oldest daughter, wasn't fond of Nora, Charlotte, the younger daughter, kind of took a liking to him because her mom did. Like She kind of yeah. saw it as if my mom likes him, he's good enough for my mom, then I'll just deal with him. I think she was just dealing with him. Yeah. Here we go. It was St. Patrick's Day weekend. Ooh. And a time for celebrating. Mind you, St. Patrick's Day weekend in Ireland, in Dublin, has Ooh. to be the coolest shit ever. Lit. As Lit. They say. Not only <laughs> it's Charlotte's Charlotte's birthday is the day after mine. So it oh. happened on the 20th, March 20th. Her birthday is the 21st. Her upcoming 22nd birthday was about to happen, and they wanted to kind of go party. Charlotte was nagging Linda, was like, hey, let's go drink. Let's party it up. She actually like brought a bottle of vodka to her and was like trying to take shots with her. But uh, Linda was watching her son. So she's kind of like, hey, my kid's here. I can't really go party. I mean, but uh, I don't know. They still partied a little bit together, but not at least Linda didn't just drop everything. Right. John Mulhall, who because he was still living in the house, could kind of sense that Linda needed a babysitter. So he offered to watch his grandson for the day. The pair got drunk for an hour and took the number 77 train to Dublin city center. They arrived to like a party scene festival. Like people were drinking in the streets. Yeah, I imagine it's like Mardi Gras or something, like Irish Mardi Gras. This is the coolest part of this. It just sounded so fucking cool. Like uh, everyone just partying and having a good time. Charlotte decided to call her mom and and invite her to hang out with them because, you know, they're going to party it up for her birthday. Kathleen was with Noor. Uh, it was with Nora, and it was, she was, they were about a five-minute walk away from where Linda and Charlotte happened to be, so they kind of all decided to meet up. After seeing, uh, like, rolling up to to Charlotte and Linda, Nora could tell that Linda had a swollen lip, and it should be noted that she has a Monroe piercing. Okay. So the piercing must have been fucking up her lip, and it was, like, swollen and kind of probably infected, so they decided they were going to go replace the swollen stud with a better-fitting piece of jewelry. Okay. So once uh, once uh, they're just drinking throughout the streets and they go over to a shop, blah, 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 Noor helps her, like, change the stud and everything like that. And All after that alcohol must be really sanitizing. Totally, yeah. You just pour booze on it, on your hands, and then push <laughs> it through. But when they were done, they decided, you know, what, what, they, what were they going to do for the rest of the day? So they decided to start drinking vodka and Coke to catch a buzz. Noor was just drinking straight from the bottle, and the girls were like, oh, we might... We kind of need some Coke with this, you know, like a little bit of a chaser. This guy, this he was just drinking straight from the bottle, being a fucking drunk. So mm. they decided to um, continue their buzz and really party it up for their birthday, for Charlotte's birthday. And they decided to drop some ecstasy. Oh, Jesus. Linda brought about 10 pills of ecstasy with her. I thought this was fucked up because she was just watching her fucking son and she had 10 pills lying around that shit looks like candy man your kid's gonna eat fucking ecstasy bro yep not okay with that no so when kathleen saw linda pass a pill to charlotte she decided to hop on that e-train and she she was like you know what what is that and she's like oh party and they ended up just drugs vitamins (laughs) exactly (laughs) I can't even get my dad to smoke weed with me, let alone get fucking him to drop <laughs> that ecstasy. That is good parenting. You're yeah. not supposed to smoke with your So th- <laughs> that is actually good job, dad. <laughs> so they all decided to drop some E. Um, they offered Ferris some ecstasy, but he wasn't really into it. They said he was kind of in a bad mood, so they would, were kind of clowning on him, you know, wanted him to get in a better mood. Mm-hmm. He said no. So Kathleen I like being unhappy with yeah, me alone. He was fine with his drunkness and he just he did continue to get drunk. He just didn't want to so Kathleen started tripping a little bit, started feeling her little buzz, and uh eventually kept getting into little fights with Noor. So mm. Noor was picking on Kathleen and kind of determined to ruin her fun. Linda wanted to kind of get away from it and not really like 
be a part of the buzzkill and decided to zone out and listen to some music. Mm -hmm. They're still out on the streets and stuff, which I think is like the best move on ecstasy. Just put in your headphones or whatever you have. Chill out. So after the fight had peaked, Kathleen decided the group should go back to the flat that her and Nora shared. They could take more drugs and drink more booze and chill out. On the way to the flat, Nora ran into um, an old friend he had worked with on the Juba River. It's like a one in a million fucking chance that he would run into him in Ireland. Like this, right? this river is not even close, man. They were like fishermen together. So it's really weird that he happened to run into this guy. And he comes into play later in the trial. But his friend realized how drunk he was. and That's a fantastic witness because that's something you don't forget. Like, yeah. yeah, I saw you in another fucking country or another totally. state or something, you know? Exactly. That's very credible. And he remembered that he was so drunk that he was like, go home, you know? And yeah. um, Kathleen could kind of see that they were like friends and this guy was like being protective of him. And she kind of got defensive and was like, no, 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 he's okay. Mm. Like, blah, 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 which is, I mean, yeah, it's true. He's fucked up. She should go home. And go to sleep, and this yeah, would never happen. It off. <laughs> yeah. So this person would end up helping confirm that Nora was with the Mohals that evening, kind of mm. helping to the Gardai's uh, timeline. Okay. The fighting between Nora and Kathleen continued during the trip all the way home, the, all the way up to the front door. They just wouldn't stop arguing. Just seriously, the worst trip on E. Mm. Uh, Charlotte and Linda didn't want to be a part of it, so Charlotte decided to put some music on. She decided to put on uh, a CD she had gotten, Noor, our main man, Sean Paul. (laughs) (laughs) No, dear. (laughs) Sean DePaul, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Which I thought is great because, I mean, like, just, that is amazing. Oh, fuck. (laughs) The last artist he heard was Sean fucking Paul. (laughs) that's so depressing <laughs> yeah i'm like i, I think like is that like the best or the worst background music to fight with your boyfriend or girlfriend really like half cha-cha half yeah. grinding and then he dies uh, yeah, exactly <laughs> so since linda used drugs um pretty regularly her body was kind of immune to amphetamines mm. but charlotte was feeling the effects of it. she was rolling balls Kathleen was trying to get Nora to be a part of the party, so she handed him a glass of beer that she had crushed up a pill of ecstasy and put it into... She basically dosed him. She put it into his drink, which is crazy. Um, I don't get how he didn't taste it. Yeah, that's a terrible, terrible terrible taste. Yeah, Yeah, you would notice it instantly. I know beer tastes like shit, but... Maybe, maybe <laughs> I. Most beer tastes like shit. It does, especially the kind of alcoholic beer. I wonder if, if you're an alcoholic, you're not like having Stella. Yeah, you know? fucking like, Steel Reserve Two Eleven, <laughs> <laughs> the cheapest beer you can find. Yep. But maybe in Ireland, maybe it's something dark like Guinness or something oh, stupid maybe. to where you. I don't know. Maybe he was just that fucked up. Yeah, that's definitely a factor in this whole thing. Yeah. So they, um, the girls, also took more drugs. They dropped more E when they arrived um, after Kathleen had dose uh norm the addition of e basically into Nora's system sent his sexual libido into full throttle Ooh, no. which ecstasy does why would you fucking it's yeah, three honestly, girls that's what i was thinking i was like this is not like, this is not good like not victim blaming again but kathleen i don't give my boyfriend or dude that i'm fucking uh ecstasy around any other girls right? but me like because <laughs> he's just gonna try and bang him down right It'll be like you can't you know can't control a chihuahua when it's near a blanket so- <laughs> 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 Ew. <laughs> but so he was really really just his libido was in full throttle and he didn't try and find his cure for lust in his girlfriend of course of course not oh. it wasn't feeling like the usual i love everything high that was on ecstasy too he just kind of wanted to be as close as he could to Linda Mulhall. Oh, no. Consensually or not. <gasps> so his personality of violence and abuse towards women began to kind of unravel as the night continued. There was limited space in the flat, so Linda sat on Charlotte's lap while being on the couch. Noor started to pull... Uh, Noor went over and sat next to them because they were all kind of chilling, and he started to pull Linda towards him. Oh, God. And put his hands around her waist, which is the worst thing ever, just sober or not, but especially when the other person's drunk, just being pulled is not comfortable. Being pulled by a drunk person is just (sighs) the least sexy thing ever. Especially when you're watching gorillas play (laughs) at the forum. (laughs) Because 
<laughs> True story. Yeah, uh, traumatic events for Kelly the uh, past couple weeks. It's been a bad. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it's just there's, I don't know, like, I know that, that booze gives people confidence yeah. and, and lowers inhibitions and all these things that are whatever. Yeah. But and e you ain't you. sexy. No. Knock it off. Keep your hands to yourself when you're drunk because you're gross. Same thing with E. E makes you feel like you're too sexy for your motherfucking self. Right? Oh, bone thugs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's... It's not the case. It doesn't... You know, we just I need to start filming people. for a reality check. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Where there's, there's this interpreter where someone could film you yeah. and it would just go through the app and show you what you really look like. But yeah. it would interpret it to your like drunk or e-brain. Yeah. You know? Like so a you method of communication. The right way. Yeah. Exactly. It's a translator for drunkenness. <sighs> where you could just see, hey, I'm being gross right now. Maybe I should keep my arms and legs inside the vehicle. That's a billion dollar <laughs> just not be in the vehicle. Maybe. Right. <laughs> Get the fuck out of the front seat, <laughs> Kelly. You know, just the expression. Like, <laughs> fucking don't touch anyone. Sit exactly. on your hands, god damn it. <laughs> also, shut your mouth. Yeah. Definitely don't talk. <laughs> don't. You're not picking the song either. You're not picking the no. music. No, Sean DePaul. <laughs> hey, no hey, day. hey. Hey, hey, hey. That was a good choice. <laughs> okay. Um. So he, he basically... He kept trying to pull her and Linda at first was trying to play it cool and have him release her without like letting her mom know, you know, because right. she didn't want to start any problems. They're yeah. still having a good time. She didn't want to cause any chaos or uh, chaos or upset her mom. Right. If it's already uncomfortable enough, having your mom see this or mm -hmm. whatever is just going to make it worse. Especially on E. Like, I don't know. Yeah. There's a whole factor with the ecstasy really does add something. Yeah. And cocaine. You said there was cocaine. No, too? no. Oh, okay. That was Coca-Cola. Got it. That's, yeah. what, that's how my brain interprets. <laughs> I Anytime was... the word Coke comes up, I'm like, yes, please. Well, booze and Coke, it's peanut butter and jelly. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ham, no burger. <laughs> so Noor continued to pull Linda and whisper, whispered a comment about being creatures of the night. Apparently, it's something that Noor would tell Kathleen all the time. Okay, I hate to interrupt again, again, again. Yeah, no, I love it. But whispering is not possible when you're drunk. Okay, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all creatures of the night. <laughs> What? Creatures. I said creatures. <laughs> We're creatures of night. You want to fight? It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Come here. We're good drunks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just not drunks and whispering. Me. Not, Remember not me when I was drunk? And I just. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Hey, I do remember. I'm so loud. I have a lot of memories. You took it well. I'm, you know, I love you. <laughs> I love you that's, too. that's all, man. Ah. Uh, Okay, so he told her that they were creatures of the night, but he also told her that she was like her mother, which is super Ooh. creepy. Linda was thoroughly disgusted and realized that Nora didn't care about her and was past the point of intoxication to care about anything but what he wants. Yes. Getting his dick touched. Linda asked her what the creatures of the night comment meant and asked Kathleen about it. And Charlotte and Kathleen both started to get really upset because they could see he was he was fucking up. You know, yeah. he's ruining the time. So this caused a chain reaction of tension that led up to a bloody scene. Nora was too incapacitated to realize what he had done and kept grabbing Linda and taunting her as she tried to escape. Mm. He kept telling her she was like her mom, you know? So according to the Mohals, Nora had threatened them by drawing his finger across his neck as if he was cutting his head off. This yeah. is where it starts. <laughs> so Kathleen pushed Farah and a fight followed which led to Kathleen pleading to her daughters, kill him before he kills me. Ooh. Charlotte then grabbed an orange Stanley knife, which I think is like a box cutter, and threatened Nora to let her sister go. When he didn't, she stabbed him right in the throat. Ooh. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm just uncomfortable. Sorry. <laughs> I just, you, you wouldn't think someone's going to do it. I don't know. I yeah. just don't think that he expected that at all. Kathleen supplied the girls with the tools to kill Nora. She handed Kathleen a, a knife and Linda a hammer. Oh, my God. Nora was losing consciousness due to the altercation, blood loss, and muttered Katie as his last words. <sighs> so this is where the super extreme violence starts. Time. Time stamp. <laughs> Linda began hitting Nora repeatedly while her sister stabbed him. Mm. Charlotte used a Stanley knife and a bread knife to kill him. She stabbed him so ferociously that it punctured both lungs, ripped his kidneys, and damaged his liver. Jesus. The majority of the wounds, which was, they, some accounts say at least 20 to 27 times, uh, were to his torso. Most of them were to his torso. 
and Charlotte used full strength to tear Noir to pieces. Oh, my God. Linda had crushed his skull in and hit him so hard that there were marks on the floor under Noor's <gasps> body. And she had she had the hammer, so she was oh. really putting in some work. So basically, once the killing was done, um, they listened to their mother's direction once again. It said She said, get him out, get him out. Mm. <sighs> so this led to the dismemberment. Oh. Mind you, they're all fucked up, dude. They're all rolling balls, drunk as fuck. Yes. So the sisters dragged Nora's body to the bathroom and decided to take their mom's advice and chop him up. God damn. Mm-hmm. The bathroom was small and cramped with little room to move, so Charlotte sat on the toilet seat and Linda was in the shower while Kathleen sat smoking a cigarette in the fucking kitchen. Right? Damn. Have children to do your dirty work, dude. Damn. And you would think because she was like the victim of uh, like beatings, like wouldn't you want to get a stab in? <laughs> right? I don't know. Maybe not. Motherhood failed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be you a You got to lead by example. Exactly. <laughs> or handle your own. Be a problem solver. <laughs> handle your own shit. So, Stay in the solution. Okay, <laughs> Kathleen? This is just crazy. Like I just couldn't imagine not being a part of that like... As a mom, even if you're going to do something that fucked up, you should be in that fucking room with them, not be a coward in the other room smoking a cigarette. Like, I don't get it. They use the same... Especially since she was the ringleader. You know what I mean? That's the thing is there's sometimes the stories where one person becomes more timid or kind of backs out part of the way through and is like, I can't handle this. Yeah. Which is normal response to someone dying in front of you, especially at your own hands. Yes. But... That's clearly not what's going on here. Mm -mm. This lady is like all about it. Please kill him. Here's how to do it. Here's the weapons. Here's the knife and the fucking hammer. But then that's it. I don't, I'm not doing anything. Nope. So that's not the case where she's getting freaked out and Mm -hmm. backing out. Cause that's much more common. This is fucking weird and crazy. I can't believe it. Worst mother. It's just terrible. So they had to use the, the knives and the hammer to dismember the body Charlotte started the act of cutting him up by trying to cut through his arm with the bread knife uh, that had diced his vital organs. Yeah, she took a bread knife to his fucking arm. Uh, Once Charlie, they call it Charlie, Charlotte uh, was tired of cutting into his arms, Linda would try and remove his legs with a hammer. So she would just beat. Nope, I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) Tapping out here. This all happened on my birthday, 2005, March 20th. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what I was doing then. <laughs> and while this is happening, right. it's somewhere in the fucking world. I think about that shit all the time. Yeah. Like, all I was the time. 16 like, something getting fucked up. Something is happening right now that's so violent and horrific. Yeah. And I'm just sitting here. Having a fucking In the cake. living room talking to Kelly. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, it's fucking crazy. Like, right now, some shit's happening. Yes. Ugh. Uh, so the sis- I hope you had a great birthday. I was I was probably <laughs> high as fuck. It was sixteen. It was all it was almost like the moholes. It was but just yeah. no murder. And vodka. Yeah. Yeah, no murder. It's probably a good time. <laughs> Shit. So the sisters took time cutting and breaking his bones. The <laughs> sorry, the cartilage and bone were really hard to split up. But Charlotte tried at, like her best. She was said to really be doing, like, the most of the work, like, putting in the blunt, like, just sawing and just... Her sister started to kind of freak out a little bit, but she really gave it 110%, which, again, on after taking another pill of ecstasy, your body isn't... You don't have full strength, right. uh, let alone strength to be cutting and sawing. And emotions are all over the place, and everything's different. Yeah. So the sawing took a toll on Charlotte, but she persisted while Linda cheered her sister on. Nope. Yep. Nope. That's like the support I would expect from you. <laughs> I, you said you were ride or die. <laughs> yeah. This is the die part. <laughs> when the knife became useless, Charlotte grabbed the hammer no. and started trying to, yeah. So Nora had lost about six liters of blood and the girls had tried to just soak it up with a few towels around them, which didn't really work that well. They tried shoving pieces of body down the toilet as well, uh, as well. Which I was like, do baby wipes don't work? What the fuck were you thinking? Like, oh tampons God. don't work. You're like, wh- and uh. so after they had slaughtered and dismembered Noir, there was a foul stench uh, emanating from the bathroom that was no- so noticeable to witnesses later and like neighbors and stuff. Which I was wondering if it's from just the coagulated blood or if it was because they were also really drunk. Like, does drunkness affect how? I don't know, but the smell of like 
because it did take a while, just the smell of flesh and everything was was something. Linda basically recalled that the smell was, it, it wouldn't go away. Mm. I think about it every night. <gasps> barf. Whoa. A barf cauldron. Super barf cauldron. So Charlotte cut the sinews for the legs and the sisters took okay, this turns. Is, <laughs> this is so much. This is, right? You already right? walked in kind of nauseous. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, it's not going to get better, so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I keep thinking, oh, that's it. That's the end of the dismemberment. And then it nope. keeps going. It was the part I found the most interesting because I can't believe they're fucked up doing this. Like, I yeah, just can't believe. Th- like, I couldn't even sit there and get a light show. Like, let like roll a joint at, while I'm on ecstasy. How I the- can't walk and chew gum when I, <laughs> <laughs> when I have a Coca-Cola after 3 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, add yes. vodka and E and let's right. see. Oh, my God. So um, this is making me feel like an underachiever. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, we should try harder. <laughs> I had a chai latte and I think I'm spent <laughs> for the day. <laughs> so they basically took turns doing the work. Uh, uh, they would change positions because the bathroom was kind of small. Yes. They had to just they just tried to do everything they could to make their job easier. Uh, they were drenched in blood, flesh and sweat. Mm. The most God, damn. brutal of the dismemberment. Includes Linda's choice to cut the victim's penis off. <gasps> she said that her mother claimed Noor had raped her and he wouldn't be able to rape her again. She also stated, which I thought was kind of ridiculous, I cut his private, I cut his private parts off, the long piece, not the balls. What? I don't know why she, she just, had to say that, but she had to specify. The long piece. Yeah, the long piece. Wow. Not the balls. Ugh. I think we need like a, like a band or a bar, the long piece? No. <laughs> <laughs> the mutilation of the genitals was an act of revenge. Um, the sisters inflicted, whereas just cutting up of the body was mostly for like disposal. Right. So yeah, but that was one thing that made it over the edge of mm-hmm. like this is specifically pointed at the yeah. abuse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nor was a serial abuser to women and this act was kind of a fuck you, you know, yeah. for hurting so many women, which again, right. you fucking raped a special needs 16 year old. You raped every girl you've been with. Like yeah. this, the dismemberment took five hours and the sisters ended up with eight separate pieces. Jesus. The torso was the largest piece and his internal organs and intestines were coming out of his body. God damn. Yep. The sisters had cut off his legs and then removed the femurs with the feet attached. Okay, this is going to be the <laughs> longest timestamp we've ever I'm had. So it's going to be like 20 straight minutes of Almost time done. Stamp. Almost done. His upper limbs were broken above the humerus. This is anatomy, okay? This isn't that bad. Yeah, it's just because you love science. <laughs> yeah, That's exactly. All. The final thing to be removed was the head, and the sisters took turns removing it. This might be the worst. Nope. No, it's not the worst. <laughs> the this Can I part. Plug my ears. Yeah. <laughs> so Linda was just like you. She was pretty upset and like you know kind of fucked up at this point. Charlotte wasn't really breaking down, but Linda was kind of fucked up, and she ended up putting a towel over Ferris' face, which we know is like people do cover up. Yeah. You know, victims' face. When they have that guilt and kind of seeing the humanity of it freaks them out. And they took a hammer to his neck and nope. severed what was left. Okay. Bye. <laughs> it's like whack a mole. You know what I mean. No. <laughs> that's not cool what do you how do you motivate yourself to no. do it like i don't know what they thought these girls are fucking crazy um that is insane so after the ordeal and possibly when they were coming down the mohals decided to call their father john mohal for help he arrived at the house and was in disbelief he saw the body parts and became overwhelmed with nausea which caused him to puke all over the stairs yeah me too dude yeah, uh, he told the girls that he didn't want anything to do with them or the situation, and they had to handle it alone. Slow clap for him. Yeah, exactly. Is, there's so he many a, people that jump in and yep. are just like, okay, I'll fix this. Yeah. I like, And that's co-signing the fucking awful at thing that they did. True, but you know? uh, both parents kind of didn't help him in different ways. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah, like, no support whatsoever. Talk about abandonment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of you has to come through. Like, come on. So their father left, and they continued their plan to get rid of the body. Did he go to the authorities? He did no. not. Well, then fuck that guy. Take my back, my, my <laughs> slow clap. Oh, you can't have it. You're not going to in a second. So they decided to take the body to the Royal Canal and dump the body at the Clark's Bridge. Mm. Kathleen assisted Charlotte and Linda carrying piece by piece and throwing the remains over the bridge. The entire body sunk into the water piece by piece. Around 11 a.m., they decided to dump the last body part, the head. 
the girls put the head in a bag and headed to a supermarket for some reason. What? Uh, with a, in, in, in like a gym bag or whatever, in some type of black bag. They're walking around, shopped around, acted really like just nonchalant oh. while they're carrying a fucking head in their bag. Uh, they headed to Sean Walsh Memorial Park in Tallet to find a proper spot to bury the head. Charlie did most of the work. Why bury the head when everything else was put in the water? That's I think weird. they thought it would throw people off. So they thought oh, maybe, maybe identifying him exactly a lot of times mm-hmm. his hands in the head, mm-hmm. which I guess the Royal Canal is not the place to dump a body. Like it was it used to be really shitty, and then they renovated it, and it was like nice, like that. You're gonna get fucking caught apparently okay. if you throw it in there. So they definitely were kind of smart to take the head somewhere else. Okay. Charlie did most of the work, and the events of the night seemed to be wearing on Linda a little bit. Uh, Kathleen Mulhall threw knives, the knives and the hammer, into a nearby pond. After the body parts had been found in the canal, for fear of getting caught, Linda Mulhall allegedly returned to the park, dug up the head after drinking a bottle of vodka, and using her son's school bag, she transferred it to a field in the Kil- Kilgarden... Kilnarden, Kilnarden estate in Tallet. It's basically in Tallet, uh, where she broke it up with a hammer before burying it again. No. Yeah. No, dude, no. Yeah, man. So she thought it was, which is crazy that she was really affected by this. So she had to get super wasted drunk to go find this fucking head, which I don't know how she did when she was drunk. But yeah, uh, the penis is still at large. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh. oh man. We need to make a fugitive poster of that penis. <laughs> <laughs> so basically or put it on a milk carton. <laughs> Have you seen this penis? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the cops basically had no lost dog posters in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god put a little collar on it just be like have you seen my puppy <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay I'm done sorry oh, no, it's really funny <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as funny as you falling off a ladder <laughs> yes I, I did fall off a ladder earlier <laughs> today so which funny. is really fun I think it's so I recommend funny. that anybody does it. I can't. That's going to be the greatest moment. <laughs> I was even there, but it makes me laugh so much. Uh, it was truly a good time. I feel like if you were there, you would have been really cried. happy. I would have pissed my pants <laughs> as an adult. Uh, okay. Okay, so the cops. I'm sure there's security footage of it. Please. There's cameras all over. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If I fell off a fucking ladder, you'd be the first person to know. And I would try and find the footage. Uh, the The cops basically had no leads, or- no leads, no clue where to start. Mm. So basically, just reaffirming this isn't in Australia. Yes, it isn't. It's not. I mean, the cops were pretty good. I guess they were. Uh, it, but it took about ten days before anyone really saw. They, uh, a person was walking by and saw Noy's leg with a sock on the end was mm. floating in the canal. So then they had divers come in and retrieve like the rest of the body parts. Nope. They tried to find out who it was, but since he had no head, they had no fucking leads. And it should be noted that he, since he was in the water for like 10 days, the pigment started to... They thought it was a white man originally. Oh, wow. So the pigment started to come from his skin, oh, God. which is super gross. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. So... Remember his friend? Yes, that they ran into from far away. So I guess they had um, identified there was a jersey he was wearing. um, And his friend identified the jersey because the last time he had seen him was wearing the same fucking germ. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it was he ended up being a key witness and said that he that he was with the three women. So then they ended up basically following up with Kathleen Mm. He found out about this because of a thing called a crime call, which is kind of like Crime, crime stoppers, stoppers, I think. Or, yeah. yeah. But it took over 100 days to identify <gasps> Nora. So it took oh. a really long time. The sisters and the parents were arrested in August, but they kind of denied it. Linda ended up kind of ratting. She was the one who told the, the guardy. She was the one that had... The tougher time with she it, did. even from the beginning. But yeah. she was also the one that built, like, got the head, you know, and oh, smashed up the okay. head at the end. So that's kind of 
I don't know. But she told investigating officers about her involvement and they took a voluntary statement in 2005. They hadn't really been making any progress at all. So when they searched the Mohal flat where everything took uh, place, I mean, since there was so much blood, they found his DNA, Mm -hmm. Um, which couldn't you argue he lived there? So yeah, but I don't know, like you see that footage in crime shows or like I was watching the jinx recently uh, and you take the yeah. piece of the flooring out and you lift it up and it's <gasps> on the wood. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot of times that's the way that they catch it. And that's not from shaving. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after Linda's confession, her mom decided to get the fuck out of Ireland. She said, nope. And ended up fleeing. They weren't, Damn. that was 2005, and they weren't able to locate her until 2008, and she was living in England. Didn't, Shut up. Yeah, didn't give a shit about her daughters, didn't give a fuck, dude. This lady's a real piece and of work. And this is way recent. You hear yeah. about that happening early, like, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s. Yeah. Like, people just disappear and exactly. reinvent themselves. Totally. But this is too recent for that shit. Yeah, like, I don't know, a good mom should support her kids either way. Like, even yeah. if you know your daughter's going to turn herself in, then you... Do your best. Even if you're going to lie, like, be there, right? Yeah, but she's... She's fucked she's up. She's troubled. So at one point, there were 50 Guardi uh, working on the case. Mm-hmm. Um, it was considered to be one of the most gruesome cases in Ireland because... Oh, you think? All the timestamps. You know, it's called timestamp. <laughs> because it was so gruesome, they were dubbed the Scissor Sisters. Oh, so. God. The sisters, okay, this is an account that someone, I again, I couldn't really find. It, it did come up, but it said the sisters were betrayed by their brothers and said they had information about the body, uh, mm. thanks to Kathleen Mulhall telling her sons, James and John, about the experience. So they kind of confirmed it. But they were also at the... They were also at their uh, sisters' trials, and they gave them hugs and everything like that. So I don't mm. know if they really did or if it helped at all or if the girls didn't care. Yeah. That's yeah. That's a weird place to be in though. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's your family no matter what, but they did these terrible things, but also it is that kind of thing where it was not maybe specifically in self-defense, yeah, but in overall abusive, Mm -hmm. like timeline self-defense, you know what I mean? Like just because in, again, the Brescia Meadows case, just because she wasn't actively being attacked doesn't mean that her life wasn't in jeopardy for the last few years that she'd been abused. Exactly. So it's like, I don't know. Like I get why they would still talk to the sisters. Also, they both were in jail. Oh, well, you know, you know, the family that serves time (laughs) together stays together. They rats each other out. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So they basically confirmed that Nora was Kathleen's partner and that their sisters and mother lured them into the flat and killed them. But again, I'm not really sure if that's so influential on the case. I don't think that's what they got convicted on, right. you know? So there wasn't too much about the actual trial. Just that they went back and forth on their mom being kind of involved. They would say, mom had nothing to do with it. Mom, mom had nothing. Me mom <laughs> uh, had nothing to do with it. And But then they would be like, okay, but she was here and she handed us this. So it's mm. kind of like maybe they thought she wasn't involved, but you're giving testimony about how she clearly was fucking involved. Right. So... I don't know if they were just in denial or something, but they both were charged with murder. They pled not guilty. This happened in 2006, and Linda Mulhall was found guilty of manslaughter while Charlotte got life. Whoa. So Linda, basically the the reason why she got off is because of the defense of provocation. Okay. I don't know how to say that. Provocation? Yeah, provocation. Provocation. Yeah, yeah so. She was provoked. Exactly. Which I don't get why her sister wouldn't be under that too. Why wouldn't she be poked? Just because you're not the one being grabbed. Right. You know, she was defending her sister. If someone, th- I don't know. Yeah. But Charlotte was given the mandatory life sentence and Linda was given 15 years uh, for manslaughter. Mm. It's also noted that uh, Linda, supposedly the judge said that Linda was trying to like slow down the the court, the trial and everything by refusing to take methadone because she was a known heroin user. So right. she tried to fuck it up a little bit. Her appeals... Her leave to appeal was denied. She basically just tried to get out of the the case a lot. So yeah. Charlotte also did the same. Her request to leave, her request to leave, her Charlotte Mohal requested to leave to appeal her conviction on the grounds that Justice Carney had put pressure on the jury. Um, 
But that was, it, it didn't make sense either way. Either way, it didn't sway it. So both of their appeals weren't really taken seriously. Okay. Kathleen Mulhall voluntarily returned to Ireland in around 2008 and was voluntarily charged. Voluntarily because she was caught and she had to? <laughs> Pretty much, dude. <laughs> Dog the Bounty Hunter found <sighs> her or what? God, that would have been good. <laughs> We, I, the hallway uh, monitor. These girls are fucking. <laughs> uh, they're just the whole family looks like raggedy. Raggedy as fuck. Oh man, I don't know. That's I, that doesn't matter, but it just does when you're just a piece of shit mom fleeing the country and I right? want to talk shit about her. Uh, are any of them missing teeth? No, but we got them in row piercing, and we've got the early two thousand eyebrows for sure. Like the little I tiny. Still feel like shaved. I have those. I got to draw them in. Crazy. They so thin. No, but yours aren't thin all the way straight. Yours aren't lines, <laughs> right? You know what I mean. Yours have like thickness at the. You know what I mean. So <laughs> she got two. Everybody's ca- eyebrows suffered in that era. Oh man, it was a rough time. Yep. It was two numb ca- for eyebrows. <laughs> People, really, you just shave. I thought you were supposed to shave your eyebrows. Like, wasn't that the thing? Like, I, I thought so. it was just shaving them off and, and then penciling them, them off. Yeah. Yeah, that was very popular. Uh, doesn't look good on me, you know? No, doesn't really look good on anyone. You know, when you just did it down in the middle, too? You know, when people would be like, my brother used to do it, and I'd be like, dude, you're shaving your eyebrows too much down the middle. He's like, I'll oh, shave my yeah. eyebrows. Like, dude, you clearly shave your fucking yeah, eyebrows. I see that shit. I told my, yeah, dude, my sister did the same thing, too. <laughs> Bro, let me show you how to do your eyebrows. Okay, so Kathleen, back to Kathleen. She was charged with giving two counts of false information to the cops about Noor's uh, whereabouts and withholding information which she knew or believed would be of assistant in, uh, assistance in prosecuting her daughters. Hmm. Also charged with impeding an arrest in the murder investigation, and she pled guilty to help clean up the crime scene and to com- seal evidence. Mm. She was only sentenced to five years in prison in May 2009. Damn. Meaning she's fucking out right now, bro. Damn. Damn. That's crazy. Here's the aftermath. Nope. <laughs> the father, John Mulhall, hanged himself uh, mm. when his daughters were charged with the killing in December of 2005. Oh, no. Yeah. So Linda turned to alcohol, basically. Uh, she started self-harming. Oh, this is the point where she turned to alcohol? <laughs> turned to alcohol again and started slashing her arms, causing oh. her to spend like a week in the psychiatric hospital. She I, she might have told a couple people about it in jail, so people knew she was kind of fucked up. Saying like She seemed kind of disturbed by it. Yeah. But nobody could find the head or the penis. So... That's like considered to be the final secret of the Scissor Sisters, and Linda's the only one that knows it because she was the one that came yep. back up and got you know smashed it up. She showed remorse for her action and was uh, like pretty much overcome with guilt. Yeah, and wasn't able to compartmentalize, kind of like uh, Charlotte did, you know, and, and other right. killers do, and they'll just put it in the back of their mind. But her sister Charlotte caused like a national controversy when. Uh, when she was found holding a knife to the throat of a male prisoner. So they both were getting into, I mean, one was kind of suffering and then one was getting violent. So James Mulhall, one of the guys, this guy was one of the people that also didn't get out. So not only he had been in jail when the murder happened, but he had pled guilty to the robbery of two prostitutes, seeming, uh, claiming that he had supported, like basically had done the robbery to support the six children and that he had in Linda's four children mm. that he was taking care of while she was in jail. Um, eventually, he ended up getting jailed indefinitely for stabbing his partner, and the fight was over whether or not his mom, Kathleen, could come stay at their house when she was out. The girl said no, or didn't didn't really like it. So Damn. that was my happy story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that and was a very intense one. That was a lot. And Thank I, you for yeah, the bedtime story. Of I'm going to sleep really well tonight. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited for my birthday. I'm just going to think about... this and the haunted house I went to this weekend, like, <laughs> I'm fucked. I really I'm never go sleeping that. again. I want to go to that. That'd be good. It's Yeah, it's awful. It's totally awful. How much was it? You said it was expensive, right? Is it less than... It's 35. Oh, my God. Have you been to Universal Studios? <laughs> this shit's like 100 something. Yeah, I know. But then you get to spend the whole day In at line. Universal, you know? Like, oh, this yeah. was... A half hour of my time. 
It's not. It's not the end of the it's world. Not? I still okay. paid for it. Okay, but I'm yeah. just saying, like, it wasn't like, oh, here's a ten dollar on it out. Yeah, you know, it's true. But those yeah. always suck. So this plus the Scissor Sisters, Scissor like, sisters. I'm gonna get a lot done because I'm not gonna be able to sleep. Yeah, lots of cleaning, tweaking out with Woo. like a toothbrush, scrubbing everything. Yeah, that's awesome. It's gonna be <laughs> like you are Charlotte or Linda Mulhall in jail, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Charlotte. Oh my God, I don't know why that wasn't even in there, but Charlotte. That wasn't in my updated thing. But Charlotte had a kid while she was out on bond. She got pregnant while she was out on bond um, and then ended up being pregnant while she was in jail, had the baby while she was incarcerated, and then petitioned to keep the baby in her son with her, Damien, her son Damien with her until the baby's 18 months. So you can keep a baby with you in jail, in prison, till it's 18 months old. Oddly enough, I did know that. What? Oh, yeah. my God. That's like, yeah, that's the thing. There's there's a lot of countries or a lot of states that have that kind of rule, you know? That's so crazy. Which I think is completely nuts, you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess because they do need the mother, right? Don't you, like, kids need yeah, the mother? Yeah, it's very with- influential. Like, it's important for a child to have a mother there, you know, especially in these really extremely formative infancy yeah. years, you know? But... I don't, yeah, there's something about that that seems really not right. Yeah. No, it seems kind of fucked up, especially because it's, Cause you know, you there's murdered a possi- someone. You don't get to have a baby and just no. be like fawning over your baby and like, oh, let's just dress you up. And yeah. I'm so excited to be a mother. Like, you don't get that when no. you took a life, you know? And I guess uh, in the aftermath, too, like, I think the mom and Charlotte were jailed together and Charlotte hates both of them because she believes that Linda did did do a lot of the work and she, she shouldn't have gotten life for it and Linda shouldn't have gotten 15 years. So Damn. Charlotte is definitely still pretty salty. Well, yeah. I'd be too. <laughs> and you, you're the younger one too. And she was defending you, so. Right, yeah. Fuck. That's crazy. Ooh, yeah. That is a crazy story. Mm-hmm. Damn. damn. I thought the Poppin sisters was really intense, but yeah. this is damn. F for family? <laughs> I feel like letter S because, you know, as as we've talked, I've already finished the next episode. Uh, so cool. And so it's like so fucking depressing. It's like gruesome. sister murders mm-hmm. are I I don't know, some of the worst ones that we've done. Mm-hmm. Like it's just yeah, really gruesome and over the top. I'm excited. We both, you know. Oh wait, you don't have a sister. Never. Oh no, no. But <laughs> I have a, I just could imagine. I don't know. It's easier to put myself in that situation, I guess. But I mean, my best friend's kind of like my sister. Exactly. She grew up next door to me, just and my a, parents are pretty much her parents now. Yeah, you know? just a girl that you grew up with, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you have there that deep bond. Sort of intensity in this bond that is really unlike anything else. Exactly. That you would stab someone if they were like trying. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or at least I would die for that person for sure, or kill Absolutely. for that person. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's there's like this crazy or just stand passion. Stand out in the sun all all day. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not that. Like I would did for your sister this <laughs> weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was so dusty. Oh, so, it. yeah, these ones are so intense because yeah. there is that intensity to the relationship, I think. Yeah. You know? At least it's not sisters killing sisters. Yeah. I feel like that's there's so much jealousy with families that that would probably be. Yeah, I couldn't but, handle that. Yeah. Yeah. We did brothers and now we did sisters. Yep. Woo. Trying to keep it on, on track, equality or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think these sisters ones, mm-hmm. like, out violent Oh, the brother one. totally, dude. The girl smashed. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty nuts. So I think that's going to be pretty much it for fun. this week. So if you haven't rated, reviewed, and subscribed, we'd really appreciate that. If you haven't checked out our Patreon, there's access to rewards and merch and extra episodes and all that. So you can check out our Patreon link that's in the show notes. I sent out some more Patreon stuff this past week, so you should be looking out for those, a few more of you, and then another batch will go out in a couple weeks. I love when people take pictures. Yes. That's so cool. And we want to see your merch. Yeah. So definitely post them for us because we would love to see it and we'd love to know that you got yours. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. So again, we wanted to say thank you to Billy Crystal. Thanks, Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal. Our biggest fan. Yep. Uh, was it Linda first, or is that just the name of the story? <laughs> Angie? Angela. Yep. Billy, Crystal, and Jasmine. Jasmine. So thank Princess you so much Jasmine. to the new Patreon supporters for this week. So keep your eye out for more perks and that bonus episode that's coming out soon Woo. if you're on Patreon. 
And if you want a t-shirt or iPhone case or coffee mug, stuff like that, we've got merch on Threadless. Threadless.com slash murder dictionary. So that link is going to be in the show notes as well and on our social media. So um, we've got two designs up there right now. And sometime this week, I'm going to put up two more. Cool. So yeah. So I'm excited about them. I'm so excited. So I think that's pretty much it. It's too late for timestamps. Yeah. And uh, the only last thing is if you want to check out uh, some links uh, for resources, if you need some domestic violence resources, anti-bullying, uh, suicide, depression, stuff like that. We've got some resources in the show notes. Fucking so AA meetings, maybe? Right. Maybe we should do a oh, list. Oh, man, I didn't even add that one. Yeah, any any type of fucking... Yeah, di- some 12-step Substance abuse. Or something. Yeah. Holy shit. I already have so many links in there, but yeah, I'm like, we no. need all of these. People need resources. <laughs> yeah. Like, we both take advantage of resources. I know so many people that have yeah. benefited from really putting themselves out there and going for some solutions. Yeah. There's so many organizations out there or groups or whatever that are helping people. So, you know, if you're going through a tough time, take advantage of that. Like utilize it. It's okay to have problems. It's just how you fix that problem. So I think you're you're on the right path. I think I need to add some sort of twelve step stuff. So I'm gonna see what the most universal like overview of the twelve step programs is and kind of put a link in there. Cool. Cool. And I think that's going to be it for this week. Sweet. Yeah? Yeah, you know what we haven't done in a while? Uh, what haven't we done? True crime and chill. I've missed my true crime and <laughs> chill <too>. time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>